Alan Rosenblum has served as Oregon Attorney General since 2012, and over that time as the state's top attorney, she's initiated or signed on to numerous lawsuits against companies and the federal government. A Democrat, Rosenblum is the first female state attorney general in Oregon history, and she was recently named president of the National Association of Attorneys General. Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum, welcome to Ion Northwest Politics. Thank you, Ken. Thanks for having me. Well, you said you're not <laughs> going to run again for a fourth term. Why not? Right. Well, you know, the third time's a charm. Uh, I feel like it, the time has come, kind of still in my prime at the top of my game. Uh, but, you know, I don't think any um, officer of the state should necessarily serve any longer than 12 years. Um, I wasn't really planning on this in the first place. I feel like I've made some great um, strides for the state. We have a lot of accomplishments uh, to be proud of, and it's time to pass the baton. What will you do when your term ends in December? I have a new passport. I'm hoping to maybe take a trip somewhere, and then I'll figure out uh, kind of my next act. Let's talk about some of the things you've done uh, as AG. You were very active in securing abortion rights in Oregon after the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade. Uh, that includes establishing a reproductive rights hotline. Is the legal battle over abortion over in Oregon? Oh, absolutely not. No, it's not over anywhere. Uh, as you may know, the U.S. Supreme Court now has the case out of Texas that involves the issue of the uh, abortion medication, uh, mifepristone. Fortunately, uh, my state, our state, Oregon and Washington came together and we got 18 other states and we won a great injunction in the state of Washington in federal court. But the U.S. Supreme Court could undo that. And if we lose the uh, FDA's certification of the, um, the drug, mifepristone, or if we even lose uh, the right to obtain it, to have access to it, then we're basically talking about we've had so far... Uh, over the course of years since, since the year 2000, when mifepristone was, um, was certified by the FDA, there have been 5 million successful abortions in the country with early, early medication so that you don't get stuck uh, having to have a more you know, complicated uh, surgical type of abortion. So in Oregon, no, we are still at risk and you know we have the best laws in the state so don't get me wrong I don't want to scare people but the truth of the matter is that the United States Supreme Court though they said they were turning everything over to the states now has a case back in their lap that would make a huge difference in terms of access to abortion and we're also looking out for folks in Idaho folks in eastern Oregon uh, we want to make sure that everybody has access it's not just about you know the the valley where as a general matter it's not it's not an issue and people are are safe since we've had this landscape in terms of abortion, what has been Oregon's experience, say, over the past year with abortion access, people coming from other states to get abortions here? What have you heard sure. on that level? Well, what I'm hearing, and we've been in close touch with, for example, um, OBGYNs. Uh, we've, have, we've had a partnership with uh, some of the OBGYN community in connection with our hotline. And what they're telling us is that there have been many more, a real influx of pregnant uh, people in search of access to abortion from other states, in particular from Idaho, but actually from all over the country, even from Texas. So we have had the ability, I think, uh, I'm not in the medical field, but we've had the ability to uh, take care of them. But it's uh, definitely uh, stepped up, and it's something that we are proud of being able to take care of everyone who comes here for access. More recently, uh, you joined other state attorneys general to get a $700 million settlement from Google over their Google Play Store. Uh, what right. was the issue there, and how will this <laughs> resolution help Oregonians? So, well, if you have an Android phone like I do, you're particularly happy about this Google Play settlement because it has to do with apps, and it has to do with access uh, by the general public, by the consumer, to what they need online. And Google Play has a monopoly. Just like Google has a monopoly over search engines, over advertising, and we have yet another lawsuit that's pending right now. In fact, we have closing arguments in Washington, D.C. Uh, with the U.S. Department of Justice over uh, yet a bigger piece of the Google monopolization. Um, so for people here, you're going to be getting, if you paid any money, uh, $2 or more for Google Play apps, you're going to be getting uh, money back. You're going to be getting some money back. It's not going to necessarily be a lot. But it will depend on how much money you've put in, and you should keep a lookout for a uh, notice. For, you don't have to do anything. 
uh, you look out, look for that notice and you will be getting a, uh, a check or some kind of uh, compensation within the next probably six months to a year. It takes a while to get, it's a class action, so it takes a while to get, uh, get the money in their pocket. But I'm really proud that um, Oregon is a part of that settlement. It was not the biggest settlement that we've gotten, frankly. Uh, look at opioids, look at our Monsanto case, but the truth is it's gonna really help uh, to make, send the message to Google that monopolization, anti-competitive conduct, which is what they're engaging in, which is what, you know, all of the big tech companies we're looking at uh, is not okay. It's not okay for consumers in our state. Well, uh, let's talk about uh, one of the other big settlements. Uh, this is in 2022. You joined other uh, attorneys general in securing $11 billion in uh, opioid settlement against CVS and Walgreens. Uh, what was the impact of that here in Oregon? Well, the impact is broader than that case because we went after manufacturers, distributors, and dispensers. That's the dispenser pharmacy side of the settlements, but it started with the manufacturers and it's gone through a much longer and complex process than those two cases. Those are, those are huge numbers, but the numbers are actually a lot bigger than that. I think what we wanna really focus on is how much money we were able to bring to Oregon, and it's looking like so far, close to a billion dollars just for Oregon in terms of the settlements with the opioid companies, the ones that fueled the opioid crisis and that need to be held to account. So I'm really pleased that that money's starting to come into Oregon. Last year, we were able to bring in about 50 million of that total that we'll be getting over the course of 18 years. So those numbers, those, those particular uh, companies, the money that they're gonna have to pay out will come in over time and we'll be able to then incorporate that into our allocation program that we have set up now here. So Oregon gets, the state of Oregon gets 45% uh, and the counties and the cities get 55% of all that money that's gonna be coming into the state over the next 18 years. And we're already allocating that money. The money's going to naloxone distribution. The money's going to set up a whole kind of data system so that we're keeping track of how it's being used. We're not just you know, handing the money over, but we wanna make sure that it's being used for the purposes for which it was designed in the settlement agreements that we have. And all these settlement agreements are focused on treatment, they're focused on the community, they're focused on addressing this horrible crisis that is not over, and as you well know. A couple of uh, minutes left here, and I wanna get to this. Uh, Governor Kotek's request, uh, your office opened in criminal investigation into the Oregon Liquor and Cannabis Commission after the rare whiskey scandal and the fallout from the uh, Secretary of State Shamia Fagan situation, uh, her financial ties to a large cannabis retailer. Where does that investigation stand and are there any results from that yet? Right, thanks for asking. Well, it's still in our uh, CJ shop. Uh, CJ stands for Criminal Justice uh, Division of the Oregon Department of Justice. Unfortunately, I'm not able to give you any details at this point because it is still an ongoing investigation. It's complicated and we hope to have some uh, results for that you know, soon. With well, about 45 seconds left, uh, <laughs> what are some of your uh, other priorities? What, what will you be working on over the course of this next year during this final term? Well, as you indicated, I'm president of my national association. I have a, an initiative for the year that involves youth. It involves attorneys general throughout the country, but certainly here looking out for the next generation. We're going to be focused on uh, issues of technology, social media, mental health, the impacts of, for example, Meta, Facebook on our kids. We're going to be looking at financial literacy, which is really important. Uh, one of my key initiatives over the years has been uh, student debt, looking out for our students to ensure that their debt doesn't become an obligation of a lifetime and that their education is actually meaningful in a way that allows them to move forward with their lives. We have lots of lawsuits that are still pending. We have to deal with the uh, Measure 114, Measure 113, all these measures that come out of our initiative and referendum process. That's going to keep us incredibly busy. Thank you very much, uh, Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum. We appreciate you being on Ion Northwest Politics. Thank you for having me.